everyone, welcome back. It's Christine again with The Artist Pod, and today we're going to talk about how to draw a lemur. So, let's get arting. Alright, so, um, here is the lemur. They're, uh, black, white, and gray. The gray is really because it's a mixture of the black and the white, but we're going to draw it in as gray. We're going to get started with the white. I'm going to have to draw in the black. There's just enough because it's by his face, um, because I think I could do the eyes without it, but I can add in more details if I draw in the black, so we're going to do that. Um, so yeah, starting with the white, following the contour of um, the face and the direction I think the hair would be going. Um, they have kind of messy hair, so it gets a little longer as it comes out, and we'll probably um, mess the hair up as we go. Uh, or at least, you know, at the end when I add that little burst of um, messy hair. For now, um, just building it up like always, you know, one stroke in between two others, so you're not creating a long line, but building up uh, the illusion of fur. They kind of look angry <laughs> with their, uh, the black around their eyes, this like, angry looking angle. A lot of animals, the hair by the ears are short. Um, on lemurs, it was long. Um, sometimes, you know, you can fall into a pattern of, of uh, drawing just kind of what you know. But this is a good example of, you know, sort of checking certain things and making sure that um, you're sort of paying attention. Because the hair on the ears is longer, we can make longer strokes. Going to have the light source coming in from over here. Like always, that means it's above and in front of, not behind or next to. Because of that, um, all edges, even the edges on the side of the light source, will be in shadow. But on the side of the light source, that edge will go quickly from shadow into highlight because it's just where that edge is sort of rounding. Um, and as it rounds, inevitably, it rounds away from the light source. Um, and I may have to pop off some of the other colors so that I can see where's what's where. And this is just full pin pressure following the lines we've already created. Because we've already mapped this out. The only thing that I really have to be careful of here is making sure that the um, transition right from shadow to highlight is smooth, that it doesn't create this noticeable line. It's one of the reasons I'll draw in the shadow first, is I want to be sure that um, I can control exactly where the highlight kicks in and I'm not having to sort of backtrack, right? Like I can adjust it now instead of having to feather it in later. Um, just sort of being mindful that I don't want to clear like this is highlight and this is shadow, right? Like I don't want that to be that obvious. It needs to be gentler than that, otherwise we'll notice it'll look out of place. Foreheads tend to hold more highlight than um, anything else, right? Because there's nothing blocking it and it's closer to the light source. so. The light on the forehead will come over typically a little further. Um, and then there's going to be some shadowing over here. I'm going to start adding in the shadows and then sorting out where that would transition um, after I have shadowed it in. And this is just, you know, letting off my pin pressure. So very light strokes, just sort of filling 
<clears throat> oh, sorry, my voice gave out. Um, very light strokes, just sort of filling it in. Now on the ears, like always when the light source, um, you know, considering where the light source is, back side of this ear is going to be in shadow, light source coming from over here, whereas the back side of this ear will be in highlight. Um, so I'm going to build that in. And then of course the edges are in shadow, like always. All right, now we'll do the gray. I'll save that um, black for last. Gray is also, you know, pretty straightforward. I don't have to, it's not black, so I don't have to worry about holding back or anything. I can just put full pin pressure. I might have to darken the gray. I don't know that it's distinguished enough from the white that it's clearly a different color. Sometimes I don't realize it until I put full pin pressure that color choice isn't quite right. And then when you put full pin pressure is when you're really seeing um, the full effect of the color and you realize you got something wrong. Definitely think that's one of these cases. So I'm going to try and darken this color up, so I'm just going to select it, I'm going to nudge it, and that's going to select everywhere I just drew. I'm going to turn that off, create a new layer, go to edit, and then fill with the color we just selected. This should darken it up. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just going to brighten up the white. Make sure this is clear. Sometimes the color is just like when I do black, right? Black will look black even though I'm using gray, partly because of the colors I use around it. And so this will help that gray look more gray by brightening up the white around it. Just going to create some variation. Push some of this white up. I think the line looks a little too curated. You don't want that, so I'm um, going to create some variations in where the white and the gray overlap with each other. And then I'm going to push very lightly. Actually, let me do this. I'm going to do this on a different layer. Above the gray, I'm going to very lightly push the white into the gray to blend the transition. Well, it's not as blended on his head, I guess got kind of white mixed into his black, which is why it looks gray, so may push the white a little bit more. It's looking solidly miffed here. All right, and now for the black, which um, is always the trickiest because you still want to create shadows and highlights, but you don't want the black to appear gray, so that's always a little harder to pull off which means I'm just going to do light strokes and I'm going to be careful on where I'm placing my lines. So I'm lessening out how many lines I'm, I'm putting in in addition to lessening my pin pressure. I'm going to fill in some of these lines to create a little bit of sense of Sh uh, shadows and highlights. Try not to do too much. Yeah, I think without the sketch underneath, this actually turns out really nicely. I'm just going to bridge some of these gaps. Now to do the same thing with the eyes. I am um, irritated my wrist over the last couple of days from <laughs> drawing too much. 
So I'm trying to be careful, but I do keep rocking my keyboard a bit. I have a wrist brace on. At the moment, it's making my hand a little clunkier. I'm used to drawing with a brace on. For the most part, it doesn't interfere, and it'll help, and then it'll keep my uh, wrist stable. But it does interfere a little bit occasionally. Really, um, it's one of the reasons you shouldn't draw with your wrist, because that action of moving your wrist can hurt, can cause some damage to your um, carpal tunnel and ulnar, carpal and ulnar tendons, or nerves, or I tend to irritate both of them, although I try to be careful. Right now, it's uh, carpal tunnel, so the carpal, mm, I think it's a tendon, maybe it's a nerve, you know, in your wrist, so it can cause burning, but it can also um, cause issues with uh, your thumb and pointer finger and middle finger, whereas the ulnar tendon controls the ring finger and the little finger. Um, my ulnar one will flare up a lot. I get numbness in my pinky, but today I'm having numbness in my thumb along with the burning in my wrist. One of the ways, if you are struggling with that, being an artist for years, I, I have been struggling for that for a long time, um, is I always wear a wrist brace at night. I try not to when I'm on the computer. It's not supposed to be good for you, but there are times when I've used it to great effect during a day where it just keeps me from bending my wrist, helps stabilize that. In theory, the reason you're not supposed to use it on a computer is you strain. Um, you strain against it and it causes more damage, but as long as you're not straining your wrist against it, it's sort of that gentle reminder to keep my wrist stable. It does mean I'm having a little extra trouble drawing this, though. Now, I'm going to go ahead and um, mess up his hair. So when I'm doing that, <clears throat> what I'm doing is I'm going to create very light, I'm not putting a lot of pin pressure, but on the edge of his hair, right, just come off in different directions, kind of make it look like the hair is a little scragglier. Very light strokes, this won't work if I try to put too much pressure on it. Bunch up a you know, several going in one direction. It doesn't, shouldn't look contrived. Very light, won't take long. Very easy to do. I kind of like doing it um, when I come up with an animal that's a little bit more, uh, has looser hair. I like being able to kind of mess up their hair, even into this section where not as noticeable, we'll be able to see it a little bit. We'll do it on the ears too. Again, very light, even on the ears, making these a little longer. And I'm going to do it with the gray, and then we'll move on to the eyes. We won't do it with the black, um, because the hair right by there is, is shorter, except by the eyes. But it typically works better if I'm going to mess up that hair to do a lighter color, like by his eyes, into a um, darker color, then a darker color into a lighter color. So if I'm going to do it, I would take the white and I'd feather it more into the gray. Their eyes are brown, as so many other animals. Um, kind of like a amberish brown, yellowish brown. And the only thing I'm deciding on is if I should bring the circle all the way around because there's so much dark space. I'm probably going to do that. I don't think it looks bad. So whenever I'm doing it this way, I always try to match, you know, the contour of the eye 
But when there's so much dark space, it looks like his eyelids coming off really deeply. Um, and it, while I don't want him to appear shocked, I also don't want him to have so much sort of negative space here. It's just a little bit too much. Kind of like birds, you know, when they, they sometimes have that wide-eyed look to them because you can see around their eyes very clearly. Their eyes are so big. Um, lemurs are kind of the same way. Their eyes are so big. We'll just um, taper off, you know, the shadows and highlights pretty extremely. And before I do anything else, I always take the select tool and make sure that um, it's a straight edge. Now the light source coming over from the right, right, coming from this side. Um, first thing I always do is I add a burst of light under the pupil um, or against the pupil on the opposite side of the light source. So pupil is a hole in your eye. So as the iris comes back out, it would be catching the light, whereas on the side towards the light source, it would be dipping into the hole, so it would be um, in shadow. And then fill in highlight on the side of the light source all the way underneath the eye, tapering it out on this back side, and then really tapering it out above before adding the light flare on the side of the light, light source. So this is full pin pressure down and underneath. Doing my best to hug the pupil there. Same on this side, on the side, and then underneath. And then just adding in highlight. That highlight's gonna extend all the way down underneath, but it is gonna taper out on the edges. Now for the other side. And then the last thing to do, and one of the most important things to do, is to add the light flare on the eyes. It's really what's going to give it its, its little bit of pop. Before I do that, now that I'm almost ready, Gonna taper out the, the light flare on this side. It's a little doesn't fade right. I'm just gonna fade it. Now we'll do the light flare. Um, always on the side of the light source. Um, in the highlighted section, so I wouldn't put it up here in the shadow. And I'm just gonna fill it with the foreground color. I'm going to move to the other side and do the same thing. All right, so that is how you draw a lemur. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.